everyone it's kendall here if you're new around here welcome if you're not new around here what is up home skillet biscuit that's you that's what you are you cute little thing and it's the best day of the week it's saturday it's movie night if you're new around here to the channel, you might not know, but on Saturdays, I do a little something called Bat Movies and a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bat movies while putting my makeup on. Before we get started, we got a little word from a sponsor. This girl got sponsors. Keep these lights on. It's very expensive. I've only been here a month, but it's screaming at me. Big thanks to Audible for being a continued partner on the channel. If you don't know what Audible is, Audible is home to the planet's largest selection of audiobooks. And not just audiobooks, audio documentaries, audio fitness programs I didn't know about that one and of course audible originals which are exclusive titles that you can only find on audible from storytellers from all over the world and all walks of life and with the holidays right around the corner it's a great gift to give loved ones for a limited time you can get audible for three months for six dollars and 95 cents a month which is 53% off, 53% off, over half. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash Kenny or text Kenny to 500, 500 I'm sure you're aware we're talking about 50 Shades of Grey, but after watching the movie, I can't help but hope that the audiobook would be better. <laughs> the audiobook would give me some more insight, maybe develop the relationship a little better. <laughs> and you guessed it. Audible has 50 shades of gray. <laughs> that is going into the listening list of my weekend. What are y'all up to? <laughs> Again, if you would like to get three months of Audible for just $6.95, that's 53% off for three months. Be sure to visit audible.com slash Kenny or text Kenny to 500 500. Thanks again to Audible for being a continued partner on the channel. And now let's get down to the nitty gritty, the nittiest of grittiest. Not really, actually, it's pretty benign <laughs> to be a movie about BDSM. Last week, we talked about Sharknado, a tornado slash hurricane that comes upon Los Angeles filled with sharks that are still ravenous and want to kill people on the way down. If you haven't seen that, that'll be listed above in the cards, as well as a link to the bad movies in a beat playlist. This week, we're talking about your mom's guilty pleasure, also evidence of a very unfulfilling sex life known as Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. I've been asked so much to talk about this film. I think it's largely due to my very vocal nature speaking out against really toxic romantic quote unquote tropes. I understand that a lot of people think that Fifty Shades of Grey is kind of the pinnacle of that particular social issue, right? The domineering, jealous man with a dark past and a current deviancy as relation to that dark past, that good girl, generally virginal, who is going to save him from himself by having sex with him for two hours. <laughs> I've talked about this movie before, if you've noticed. A lot of people wanted to know like, what my thoughts were on this particular movie, considering it's not as much alluded to as it is more, you know, in your face, these people are smashing. And I gotta say, you might be disappointed by this video. A, this movie is intended for adults. This is not targeted to pre-teens or even people in their late teens so much. It's it's garnered towards people in the age bracket of the character, 22 to 30 ish arguably it's not even then i feel like the targeted audience is actually just very sexually repressed suburban housewives in their 40s but because the prime demographic is not say high schoolers or teenagers i don't mind it being as much of a toxic relationship primarily i would imagine this is supposed to be targeting people that have life experience and are better at differentiating between desirable and undesirable traits and being able to decipher between reality and fantasy in theory. B, it's hard for me to take it seriously enough to like unpack it so thoroughly as I've done these other films. I genuinely can't wrap my head around this movie being erotic or desirable to anyone. <laughs> the entire two hours was a comedy and a good one at that. It was hilarious. It felt like I was watching a porn parody of Twilight, which essentially is what the movie is. I guess first off, I should clarify that I'm actually not opposed to films that are focused primarily on sex or or the development of a sexual relationship. Two characters exploring themselves in quote unquote unusual ways sexually. My issue is that this movie is downright comical. It suffices to say that this movie is comically underwhelming. People build it up to be this like movie that's gonna break, oh my God, it breaks all these 
barriers. This is the most intense movie you've seen. This is it. Y'all need to live a little. Before I get started on the movie proper, I feel as though I should give you a little background. If you didn't know, this film was originally a Twilight fanfic turn New York Times best-selling novel to a movie. I actually remember when the book was, was on the New York Times bestseller list because I was looking for books to read. And every time I looked, I was like, 50 Shades of Grey. And I, a lemon reading fan fiction nut, said, that sounds terrible. <laughs> like the day you catch me paying for fan fiction is the day you meet someone bad with money. If you've seen Twilight or read Twilight and then see this movie, you can easily tell that it was a fan fiction because each person is such a poorly replicated version of already poorly made characters. <laughs> I've actually already done a bad movie than a bee on Twilight. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up above. But it's one of my favorites personally of the bad movies in the bee. It's very enthralling. <laughs> I use that word like eight times in the video, if not more. But yeah, the very dynamic of our main characters, Anastasia Steele, that's a porn star name, and Christian Grey, by nature feels very unoriginal, uninformed, underperformed, and vastly underdeveloped. Even more so than how underdeveloped it was in Twilight. Actually, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so let's talk about our main characters. Anastasia Steele. Steel. I'm gonna hear for refer to her as Anna. Innocent, virginal. She has this awful voice. I'm Anastasia Steele. Like her voice sounds like she swallowed a peanut as a child and it got lodged in her windpipe. And so now her voice just sounds like half a peanut. <laughs> Someone taking a Q-tip and pulling at the threads and just, just like tickling the inner part of your eardrum for two hours. And of course, because these movies are so painfully unoriginal, she is our good girl. Complete with Kagome bangs, and I believe the children are our future outfits. I am so tired of this concept because I've, I've touched on the, the guy with the bad past a lot in this series, but I haven't really touched at length on the good girl trope. Like it's never just the bad boy. It's also the good girls, not two bad people, two, a bad girl and a bad guy or two good people because who would want to watch that? Usually a virgin. She's usually never dated someone, never been kissed. She's not brought to fruition. She's not actualized as a singular human being until she has a penis in her. I said I was just gonna keep this light and funny, but I guess I can't help it. Can we talk about the internalized misogyny of this? But okay. Wow, that foundation's not the right color. God forbid that you have traits of being intelligent and well-adjusted on your own. That won't work. We need some instability. We need some dick in your life. Anna goes to interview local billionaire and entrepreneur Christian Gray. And this first meeting really allowed me to know that y'all did not expect me to take this movie seriously. And henceforth, I generally don't. She walks into his office and trips over nothing and she meets Christian Gray. And this is the most underwhelming first meeting between two people who are gonna have a sexual or otherwise romantic relationship. It's Kevin. Christian Grey. I don't know if it's just because the script is awful or he was just severely, severely miscast for this role. Either way, this scene all scenes, honestly, are just downright laughable. He's supposed to be this like intimidating, looming figure, energy, masculine, blah, 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 blah. My dude is 5'6 with baby shoulders. He got a Bambi face from the nose up. He got a short dude voice. I'm giving the commencement address at this year's ceremony. He just, he's not giving me intimidation. And if he were the way he looks, but he was a better actor, he'd give me a smize, give me some intensity. Like he gave me nothing. I've seen daytime television with so much better sexual tension than this. And if he's not intimidating, the entire point of this movie is null and void. If he's not convincing me that he is this just raw sexual energy. We don't have a movie and her responses to this lack of intensity does not make sense. While at his office, Anna and Christian have this very awkward interview where she's like asking him some basic questions about his past and what helped lead to his success. Like it's supposed to be this super intense scene where 
it's like awkward and he's so intimidating and instead it was not awkward by way of sexual tension it was just awkward we're gonna get personal i actually i tend to like a somewhat intimidating man i like guys who are like intimidatingly intelligent yes daddy make me feel dumb like dudes that make me feel dumb because of their sheer intelligence uh do you hear niagara falls <laughs> It's hot, I get it. The problem is, this is a really bad execution of that. I've always found that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. The key to my success has been in identifying talented individuals and harnessing their efforts. This purely awkward interaction is supposed to be a springboard to all of the events that happened thus far. Like how do we get to, to bondage and ropes and chains from this? They've known each other for maybe what, five minutes? She goes right into, I feel like there's more about you that people don't know or something like that. Perhaps your heart might be a bit bigger than you want to let on. There's some people who say that I don't have a heart. Why would they say that? Because they know me well. Like I joke about Twilight jumping the gun and falling in love. I'll admit that there is some like very apparent tangible tension between Edward and Bella. Like you can visually see it, it's very intense. As stupid as that movie is, at least it got at least that right. This is what Twilight is like if you take the vampire element out of it, there's nothing there. Literally for no reason and with no evidence, She's like, why are you so closed off? How do you even know he's closed off? Y'all just met. After their first meeting, she's completely and utterly breathless. This interaction was something, even though I saw it, we all saw it. This one got you moist in the drawers. So Anna works in a hardware store. She ends up seeing him while he comes in to pick up some supplies. I will say that this movie really did hone in on the serial killer vibes that I had with Edward. Almost too well, almost too on the nose actually. As he goes into her shift and he buys like cable ties, rope, some tape. Side note, did I ever tell YouTube the story of the time I got offered BDSM on the street? Story for another day. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> I just bring up like titles of stories of my life and people are like, but when are we gonna get that story? I never get around to it. Maybe coveralls, so you protect your clothes? Could just take all my clothes off. Okay, no clothes. I mean, no coveralls. Oh my God. I keep saying that this was the beginning of the hilarity. I don't know where it started. It was just so funny. <laughs> the thing that made me laugh so hard through the entire film is that I know that you're trying to tell me this is sexy, but all it did was make my nipples turn into raisins and fall off my body. No judgment, no judgment. We all, I, I don't know, everyone's into stuff. But was this genuinely sexy to y'all? Like the movie. This line was so abrupt and out of nowhere, it made me, viscerally, visibly cringe. I was like, what the hell was that? To me, it felt like watching like my Tinder text histories, like how you're having like benign conversation and then, hey, here's my penis. Anyway, they end up getting coffee together. And again, we're supposed to see this raw, overwhelming, intimidating, looming, masculine energy that is Christian Grey. And the only thing I could think the entire time was like, is this, is this his first movie? No, is this his first time acting ever? Did they just pull some random dude off the street? I felt like every movement of his face and of his eyes and of everything just felt very calculated. Like he didn't know what to do. I felt like I was watching the wheels in his head spin as he's like, oh, well, this is something that a sexy guy would do. Every blink, every shift of the eyes, every, every like, reaction is so comically methodical. And I couldn't figure out what it was that was so familiar about it other than like all the crappy movies we've seen thus far. And then I realized my guy looks, sounds, and behaves like an android in Detroit Become Human. My guy is Connor. After every scene, he has to reboot and download new emotion packs, new emotion mods. <laughs> this is stroke mod. <laughs> not the man for you. You should stare clear of me. Dare I say Twilight did it better. I can't believe I'm saying that. Twilight did very few things well, <laughs> other than have a great soundtrack. This actually had a great soundtrack as well. I'm sitting here trying to do this scene by scene, but then the more I talk, the more I realize, who cares? Like each scene is literally just little, little 
foolishness that doesn't really matter. That all just ends in them having sex. Fast forward, there's a scene where she's like drunk and Christian out of the blue honestly out of the blue feels the need to pick her up they do not know each other they have not interacted really there's nothing there's nothing that's supposed to suggest that he should feel any um emotional capital in her but he's like i gotta go and stop her from drinking like the 22 year old adult that she is there's like a little fight to our jacob equivalent instead of being native american he's hispanic which by the way, that scene was downright lazy. It was one shot. It was the longest, most continuously awkward filming. Nah, we got 15 minutes, hurry up, just, just do it and let's go. She eventually passes out and ends up spending the night at Christian's hotel room. And he gets shirtless, unwarranted, that is creepy. There's this toast scene that is so awkward. And so, oh my God, I have actual tears in my eyes. It's so bad. I'm supposed to be in a pool right now, swimming. Nothing, dry land, desert. Why am I here, Christian? You're here because I'm incapable of leaving you alone. Then don't. Again, this does not work without the vampire element. The I can't stand being away for, literally why? There's been no conversations that are supposed to be particularly indicative of them having some deeper conversation. We guess there's something more about you that you're not showing people. Is that all it takes? It's like a cheat code to, to male vulnerability. Hey daddy, cause I know there's just a plethora of straight men watching this video. Hey daddy, I can tell that there's more, sorry. I can tell that there's more to you that you're hiding. My cash app is... Like, honestly, this movie is largely just filler. Like, if you boiled it down to the point, which is sex, you could have had this movie done in the time it takes for you to order a pizza. Anyway, we're supposed to believe that there's all this sexual tension and it's about to come to, to a head. So he says, we're not gonna do anything until I have a written consent that you're okay with this. Can you imagine the moment you're about to get hot and heavy with someone, by the way, I need you to sign this. Sign that you consent to whatever is about to happen. No, but it doesn't matter because they're leaving out of their hotel room and he's like, duh, forget the contract. And because there's just all this sexual tension apparently. It's supposed to be. I don't know where it's at, but there's all this sexual tension apparently. This whole thing about a contract, but a girl with a baby voice stands there and he's like, I can't do it. Can't do it. They eventually end up at Christian Gray's home, which yes, interior design. At the house, he gives her an NDA to sign, which is stupid because very shortly after he like introduced her to his mom and, and takes photos with her publicly. <laughs> Are you gonna make love to me now? I don't make love. I fuck hard. Ooh. <laughs> now we get to the part that everyone I assume is looking forward to. That is the unveiling of the playroom. For all intents and purposes, Christian Grey's BDSM chamber. Say something, please. If we're making our Twilight parallels, I'm presuming that this room is supposed to be our diamond skin, you know? Now, the sheer fact that I'm gonna show you this room tells you that this movie didn't commit to the idea or the purpose of this, of this room. Like, you could take this same setup and put it in an Ace Hardware. <laughs> There's nothing obscene about it. It looks like the inside of like a, your your average equestrian's setup. Y'all just put a bunch of household items on a string. For some reason, after being in a room full of whips and chains for about a minute and a half, only then does Anna realize that he may be into BDSM. You're a sadist. I'm a dominant. What does that mean? It means I want you to willingly surrender yourself to me. I have rules. If you follow them, I'll reward you. If you don't, I'll punish you. My man's face don't move how human faces move. I used to believe that my dude is not Hollywood's attempt at making an RK-800. Somebody get him before he go deviant. He finds out she's a virgin and he's like, yeah, I gotta fix that. So they have sex. We got full backside Hank Hill booty nudity. <laughs> he eventually does draft up a contract in which she would sign it saying that she agrees to be his submissive and by the way, he will respect any limitations that she has. Do I feel like doing every scene? No, because the rest of this, because the rest of the movie is just a bunch of a rhythmic, syncopated, boiled chicken, unseasoned dressing ass sex. There's this scene where he's like, 
if you roll your eyes at me again, I'm gonna bend you over my knee. Ugh. Sir, I am unconvinced. Again, your voice is too small and your shoulders are too narrow to talk to me like that, sir. That's what it boils down to. The whole movie is sorely unconvincing. There's a bunch of whiny melodrama where she wants more than just sex from him and he's like, no, I don't know how to do that. Somehow that she's changing him into a different person. I don't know how. There is no interaction that you've had thus far that's indicative to y'all changing each other at all. Especially her to him. Like he, nothing has happened between you two that makes it seem like his life would be any different after having sex with specifically you. Uh, there's a little blip about his mother being a crack addict. Sorry, that's not funny. It's funny because it came out of nowhere. Like his mom being a crack addict and him being in a sexual relationship with an older woman when he was 16. So rape. And that's how he got introduced to BDSM, but they don't really expound upon that much. And she doesn't really offer any assistance in him working through that outside of just having more sex with him. So I don't- But eventually, finally, we arrive at my favorite part of this movie. It's so funny. It's so hilarious. Because Anna is overwhelmed with Christian's incessant need to punish her. Like, what is that all about? What is with the punishment, you know? So she confronts him and she's like, however bad it can be, show it to me. So I can understand. <laughs> Sorry, my button was distracting me. Anyway, and so he's like, fine, I'll show it to you. Now I'm sitting here like, okay, Maybe this will be the scene, right? That's like, oh, I get it. Why this is supposed to be so intense. I was expecting him to come out with a giant Oscar Mayer wiener truck ass <laughs> and just like spin her around like a rotisserie chicken. I was expecting something outlandish, right? This movie is supposed to be about sadomasochism and it's been incredibly tame. Like, yeah, I've seen nudity, but like I've seen nudity in films before. Like I don't, I don't get what's making this movie like a thing, right? He tells her to like bend over and then he whoops her with a belt, a normal belt, six times. They play dramatic music and she's crying and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of it, she's like, don't touch me. Is this what you want? Is it you want to, you want to see me like this? <laughs> this is what you want. You want, to see, you want to see me like this? And I actually saw this movie several times when in the making of this video. I saw it by myself. I saw it with my friend Kyrie. And both of us at the same time was like, that's it. There's a part in the movie where they're going over the contract and he had in writing that he wanted to, to shove his entire forearm up her butt. And she just laughed that off and giggled. But this is it. This is your limitation. You are a sicko. Ugh. Honestly, did you think that the, the belts and whips and chains were were for decoration. She's distraught and she doesn't know what to do because she loves him. And he's like, no, don't love me. You shouldn't love me. I'm a bad person to love. And she's like, but I ain't you. And then the movie just kind of ends pretty abruptly. It's just like over. And I'm like, oh, okay. This movie could have gotten a lot more accomplished in 30 minutes. And I would have had a pizza at the end of it. I would have had a reward. In conclusion, this movie is incredibly underwhelming. If you're gonna make a movie about BDSM, commit. I don't know, I just feel like this movie was made popular by a bunch of like 40 year old housewives on their second husband, whose kids are like 14, 15, so they don't really wanna talk all that much and their husbands are always at work. And so they're like, I need some excitement in my life. And they're obscenely sexually repressed. So much so that in 2012 was the first time they'd ever heard of BDSM. Anyway, that's all folks. If you liked this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Again, if you haven't checked out the other videos in Bad Movies in a Beat, be sure to check them out up above. If you have any requests for Bad Movies in a Beat, be sure to put those down in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.